Today we're going to look at how to calculate average and instantaneous velocity from position time graphs. Not so long ago we defined velocity as equal to the rate of change of time. And we wrote that as an equation. We said that that would equal the displacement or change in position divided by the time interval. Often we just wrote a t because our initial time was zero, but we could do it from any initial time to any final time, so we'd have a general time interval on the bottom. And then when we started doing actual problems, we'd write that as x final minus x initial all over t final minus t initial. So we had this equation for velocity. So let's say I asked you to find out the velocity between this point and this point. There would be an initial time one second in, in this case, a final time, 6.5 seconds, an initial position, 11 meters, and a final position, 7 meters. And that allows me to create a little right angle triangle here. And this side of our triangle would be x final minus x initial. That would come out to be negative because our slope is downwards. This side of the triangle would be t final minus t initial. So that x final minus x initial is really the rise. In this case, the drop because we have a negative slope. And our time interval here, that's the run. So our velocity on a position time graph is just equal to the slope. And we sometimes say that that's the slope of the secant between points. Notice here that the velocity that we calculated only depended on the two points in question. Didn't depend on how you got there. And in fact, this is a average velocity. In that average velocity, we say it's independent of path. It only depends on where you started, where you ended, and how much time it took to go between those two points. So if we maybe plug in some numbers here, our rise would be 7 minus 11, and our run would be 6.5 minus 1, or 5.5. And you get an answer there of negative 0.72 units would be meters per second. What that means is that a person, starting at this initial point, moving at a constant velocity of negative 0.72 meters per second the whole time would end up at exactly the same final position. So that's an average velocity. Now because I know all of you are good at taking the slope between two points, I'm going to assume you're all good at finding average velocities from a position time graph. But what if I ask you a different question? What if I ask you, at two seconds, what was the velocity of our object? So if I just say two seconds to you, you've only got one time. And so you don't have a time interval. And I think what some of you would do, and what I've seen some students do on exams, is to choose points on either side of two seconds. So let's say this point here and let's say this point here. Those seem to be points on the curve. And what they do is they say, well, the instantaneous velocity at two seconds will just equal the average velocity between 1.5 and 2.5 seconds. So V at two seconds should be approximately equal to V average between 1.5 and 2.5 seconds. And then they'd calculate the slope between those two points. They would get, what, 4 minus 8 divided by 2.5 minus 1.5 to get that average speed to be negative 4 meters per second. And that should approximate the instantaneous speed at 2 seconds. And my response to that would be, not bad. Good thinking. But we can do a little bit better. Let's see how we could get a better estimate. So I'm going to draw a magnified, a blown up motion curve. 
So we've got x going up this way and time going across this way. And let's say that I ask you to determine the instantaneous speed at this particular time here. So you would pick two points on on either side of the critical point and you'd find out the slope of the line between them. And that would be not a bad estimate. But it'd be a better estimate if say you chose those two points. And it would be a better estimate still if you were to choose say these two points. And what if you chose two points right beside the point, then it's going to be exact. And that is a little segment of a line that we call the tangent line. So I can, here's my little tangent line. I'm just drawing a line through our point and right through that little segment. And this here would be what we call the tangent line. So it goes right through our critical point and has the same slope as the curve at that point. And so our overall result is that an instantaneous velocity will be equal to the slope of the tangent line at the point. Let's redo our previous example where we want to estimate the velocity at exactly two seconds. So we'd get our ruler out and we'd place it so that it touches the curve at two seconds. What that would be right there. And what you can see right now is the ruler cuts the curve in two places locally, close to the point in question. So it's cutting here and it's cutting here. So that means we need a little more slope. So we rotate our ruler a bit and let's try again. There's the point in question. Oh, once again, we're cutting through at the point and we're cutting through again here. So that's not a tangent. Go a little farther. This time pretty good. Cutting through here and somewhere over here as well. So we need to go a little bit more sloped. And I would say right there is good. So we can now draw our tangent and get into the habit of drawing a nice long tangent. Because what, what you have to do now is choose two points on your tangent curve. Well, we know one point, and that would be right here where the tangent line just touches. I then like to choose points that perhaps go right through the corner of a grid, because that, that makes it easier to make my estimate. And I'd say right here, that's pretty good. That point there is 0 and 13. That would be a good point. We've got this point here, which is what, 2, 6. So maybe I'll just use those two points. Let's see if there's any other good grid points. There's a pretty good one right there, or even right there. Let's try this one, which is what, 3, 2. So I'd like to get two points, and, and, they sh and the two points should be well spaced. You'll get more accurate results if they're well spaced. So now we can say that the instantaneous velocity at 2 seconds will be equal to the rise over the run. So choosing these two points, rise 2 minus 13, run 3 minus 0. So we get negative 11 divided by 3, or approximately negative 3.7 meters per second. And 3.7 should be a more accurate result than our previous result, which I believe was 4 meters per second. Now we try to be skillful in the way that we place our ruler, but of course this is just an estimate. But we should be able to get within about 10% of the true answer. And generally the IB will accept answers within at least 10% of the true answer when you're using the slope of a tangent to make an estimate. Now on a typical IB exam, you're going to be asked to do an estimate using a tangent line at least once per paper. And it's a skill that doesn't just apply to velocity. A tangent line can be used to calculate any rate. So acceleration here is the rate of change of velocity.
So if we have a velocity versus time graph, and we want to know the acceleration, the rate of change of velocity at a particular time, in this case two seconds, to f then we need to use the tangent line at two seconds. So let's do that. Okay, first guess, not too bad. My ruler is going through the point and through another point, so it's crossing at two different points. That's no good. We need a slightly steeper slope. Now, this seems pretty good. It's going through the point, and it runs along the curve for a fair distance here, and you'll notice it's about an equal distance on either side of the point. That indicates that we've got a pretty good tangent line, and so I'm going to draw it there. So here's my tangent line. And now I'd like to choose two points on that line that are well spaced and hopefully that go through grid points. I like that grid point right there, which is going to be 4.2 seconds and 23 meters per second. And I'd say right here we've got another very good grid point. We could use 214 as well. This point here would be, what, 0 0.4 and 7. I kind of think 214 is more accurate, so I'm going to use these two points here. And my acceleration is going to be the slope of that ta tangent line, so it'll be final value, 23, minus initial value, initial speed, 14, all over the time interval, which was 4.2, minus 2.0. So we're going to get 9 divided by 2.2, which is equal to 4.1 meters per second squared, or to one significant figure, 4 meters per second squared, as suggested in the problem. So summarizing the key points from the video, we first of all talked about average velocity and how it was equal to the slope of the secant between points on a position time graph. We then talked about instantaneous velocity, the velocity at a particular instant in time, and it would equal the slope of the tangent line at the point. We had a few rules for drawing tangent lines. One. It's a straight line that passes through the point. And two, it doesn't cross the curve locally again. It only goes through that point. And then our final point was that we could calculate any rate from a tangent line. So power is the rate at which energy is used. So if we had a graph of energy versus time, we could do a tangent line to find out the instantaneous use of power. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.